Good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on what time of day you're watching. Um, it's a review, uh, well, a review video, shall we say. Um, I've just got to get into it. Well, I've got to be careful because it's paper inside and I don't want to... I need a letter opener, that's what I need. Big on letter openers in the UK. I never see one. Where can I buy one? Does anybody know? I also need an angled fucking palette knife like Cindy's got because that looks like it's so. Oh, we wrapped it in bubble wrap. Sorry, then. That looks like. <laughs> can you see what it is? It's Tomoe River Paper. Um, when I figure out how to get into it, he's, he's sealed it well, bloody hell. Right, okay. I'm going in. The reason I'm being so careful is because ideally I would like to use the um, bubble wrap to store it in because it is um, loose apparently. I don't know. I'll let you know when I get into it, but this is not going to work. I'm going to have to rip it, I think. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Okay. Hang on. Oh, it's inside another packet. Okay, right. All right, then that's fine. Okay. Now, I've heard lots of good things about this stuff. I've heard that it is the bee's knees, the dog's bollocks, whatever you want to call it. But I've also heard it's really thin and that this is the stuff that they use in the Hobonichi binders. So I'm going to test it. Okay. Um, wow, that is thin. <laughs> right. This is one sheet. One sheet. It is, yeah, it's like tracing paper, guys. Right. Okay, this is it. This is one sheet of the stuff. Um, yeah, I'm going to grab my... I use this as a mouse mat, so... It's not like you can see through it. I was wondering if I'd be able to sort of see through it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try fountain pen on it. Okay. This is, this has in, ink from, I think it's India in it. Okay. So. It's nice, but I want something with a little bit cushiony underneath it, I think. I can see the lines from my book. Hang on, let me find a clear page. This is just a pucker pad. And I can see the lines clear as a bell. I don't know whether you can on the camera, but I can. Okay. And I'm going to test all of my pens. Most of them have fine nibs or extra fine nibs. I have one, one or two with a medium nib, but only one of them has got ink in. I've 
got to spell pilot for a minute then. Those have all got fine to extra fine. This is an old Parker pen. It's got a medium nib. And I don't use it usually because it tends to spooge. That feels very wet. Just writing out feels very wet. Okay, I've just thrown everything I have at this, um, including my stamp and inks, because I've just found out the Navigator paper that I bought, uh, that I'm making my notebooks, that doesn't really do well with the stamping, it gets a bit wet. So, that's the front, it all went down really, really nice actually, um, there's no feathering, there's no bleeding, there's no... It felt wet going down. The only thing that doesn't look like it's dried yet is the Parker pen. Okay, that still looks just ever so slightly wet when I move it in the light. Um, 0 0.7, although I wrote it feels wet, that now looks like it's dried. These all went down with no trouble whatsoever. Bit of watercolour, it's slightly buckled the page. Um, that was an ink stamp and that was a gelato. And then I just did a little stamping as well. So, moment of truth, how bad is the other side? Oh, wow. Do you know what? I expected this to be really bad because everybody was like, oh, yeah, ghosts and all that lot. But the only thing I have not tried, that I have not tried, is a pet artist pen. I mean, I haven't done um, light coloured pencils on here because I assumed that they would not go through like regular pencil. Okay, so that's a pit artist pen. That's dried up quite quickly. Blimey. That's really good. Okay, I'm going to take away the dark underneath and put it on a white. Okay, so it looks slightly more um, shadowy there. But I was expecting, sorry, I'm just making some space. I was expecting that to be really bad. But I personally could live with that. I may well do um, a future notebook for like, maybe June, because I've got notebooks for April and May, but I may do June on this. I wonder what it prints like. Should I chuck it through and do a dot grid quick? Okay, bear with me. Well, it handled that with no issues whatsoever. Um, and you guys probably can't see it because my, com my camera's not that good. But it's just printed up my regular dot grid with no issues. Um, you might be able to just see a hint of the grey. They're very, very light grey dots. Although, I think if you had like a dark template, you could probably see the dots through this. It looks worse when I hold it up because you can see the shadowing. But I think if you had, this is the rest of the pack, it wouldn't be quite so bad. I mean, you know, you, you're going to have to make your own decisions on that. But I personally think I could live with this. And a book made of this is going to be a damn sight thinner than a book made with 80 GSM or more paper. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what have I got over here to try? 
Paper Mate ink dry pens. Let's do it all on the same side, okay? Um, what about what's that one? That's a Pilot G1 in gold. I'm literally just hunting for what I might have that I could try. Um, good old Bic pen, yeah? So I don't use this very often anymore. Bic for colour pen. Um, that's about it. I've, I've run out of pens to test on this thing. And... Um, Yeah, I don't have any more left to do. Uh, there's there's impressions, but that's because that is a biro, the Bic for colour. Um, the ink joy leaves a slight bit of the whole braille feeling. Um, I personally could live with that, I think. I may do a book and I may test it out um, over the course of a month and see whether this is something I personally could live with. Um, you're going to have to make your own decisions on that. Bearing in mind, my camera is not the best in the world. Um, so, you know. But I was interested, so I thought I'd give it a try. So let me know what you think. Um, yeah, I am I must admit, I'm quite, quite impressed personally. There you go. Um, if I think of anything else to try that I might have lying around the house, but I really don't have anything else. Um... I'll give them a try. Oh, I've got a Posca paint pen. Shall I try a Posca paint pen? Not that I use these very often because I don't care what the fuss is about. Are you supposed to shake them? I can never remember. Right, that's a Posca paint pen with some purple paint in it. that because it was the darkest of the four that I've got um, that's what I've got oh, okay oh yeah I've got sharpies let's find a nice dark sharpie you go good old black sharpie What a strong colour. Okay. Yeah, well, I expected that, to be perfectly honest, but the Posca paint pen hasn't come through really any more than the rest of the inks have. Yeah, I, I haven't found anything Sharpie doesn't fucking bleed through, that's why I don't use them. <laughs> but there you go. That is pretty much everything I, I've got that I could try. Uh, have I got anything else in this tub? Oh, I've got highlighters. Hang on then. These are crap Poundland highlighters. These are not midliners or anything else that might be considered decent. They are rubbish. But even they don't really, really bleed through. So there you go. Um, I hope that was useful. I like it. I am going to make a book up with these and see to compare how much thicker it would be a book of these against a book of those also how well this would cope with being sewn it feels quite strong but once I stick a hole in it how well would it cope and would it cope with being sewn up as well that's the other thing so i will put an add-on to this when i've made a book okay because i am going to try it i want to know what this would whether this would stand up to long term i think it would you know yeah okay um i'm gonna make a book 
and then I will come back a bit later on and let you know how I got on with that. Okay, so I've printed off 15 sheets, which is what my other booklets are. And um, I will get one of them out so you can see. No, it's not that one. Oh, I've only got five sheets. Excuse all the noise in the background, but I've got a child and the <laughs> tumble dryer and all that lot. So this one is also 15 sheets and it's quite thick and I made it with three signatures. Okay, but I'm thinking that this is so thin, I might be able to get away with literally just folding the whole kit and caboodle in half. So let's have a look. One thing also I've noticed, which I didn't mention earlier, is that this isn't white. I didn't actually notice that. It's more the same sort of colour as Lycatron paper. Um, that is a little off-putting to me because I don't like using ivory or cream or, you know, I want white paper. But that's just the way it goes. So really, it's um, slightly mismarketed because it's marketed as white, but it's not. That's white. That is more than ivory. So it's a slight misrepresentation, and it's not the seller's fault. That's Tom away who have marketed that as white. Now all 15 pages and there's very very little overhang there and I could trim that without it being an issue so I'm going to do this as one big fold this is just a four card that I have folded in half um, so there you go that's how much it overhangs so I'm personally quite happy with that and hopefully it'll get a little bit tighter as I sew it Now I have here a whole stencil for TN notebooks that I made, um, well for TN inserts. Um, I've, it's a five hole stencil, I just made it when I was making up my first lot of notebooks. And the idea is, is you tuck it right in the middle of your book, make sure it is nice and tight in there that everything is all nice and tight you can use clips to hold it all together if you really want to and you get a pokey thing and you poke and you push until it appears and you just see it sticking out there i keep the book slightly closed because then it makes it um straighter as it goes through the spine of the book And then once that's done, you remove the insert. You can see there, I've got five holes, nice and neat. Now, we need to stitch it. I'm using just regular cotton that I got from Aldi, actually. I use a needle with quite a large eye in it, mainly because I have trouble threading it. That's not going to be long enough. Okay, I can tell you that straight off. So I double the cotton, so I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to pull myself some more cotton. I mean, I'm calling it cotton, I don't know what the hell it is, but I'm using it, so. It was on offer in Audi one week, so I bought a load. There, now. And get it so that your tails are even. Do you know that doesn't look much longer, does it? <laughs> okay. What? I am. Like go in the front room, I said. Go in the front room. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'll just do another batch. <laughs> all right. So making sure it's all lined up, I go through the middle hole. Okay. I don't knot my cotton. I'm 
I'm going to give yourself a wee tail, enough that you can get hold of. So if you're like me and you've got long nails, you want it to be a little bit longer. Okay, now, pick a direction, it doesn't matter. I go left and then come back in the next hole, like so, until you've pulled it tight. Make sure, because look, I've got one that is slightly over. So make sure you have both threads through. Okay, just give it a nice little tug to make sure that it is all even. And then go back out the top hole. Like so. Now what I do is I get hold of the bottom thread and the top thread and pull them away from each other which makes that nice and tight. So far, so good, no ripping. And then I come back in. And now as you pull, you wanna pull in the direction you're sewing, not too tightly though, okay? Go back out the middle, keep your little tails out of the way, okay? Yes, don't pull at an angle pull down towards the end you're working towards not out like that because that's what rips it I don't see I've missed there because I went through at an angle always 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 make sure if you lose it use your pokey tool okay to make a make the hole slightly wider yes my desk is not straight then you'll come back through now my middle's got a bit loose so I pull the middles that way and the rest of the thread down towards the end of the book because that's the direction I'm working in okay then back through this hole And again, pull the threads in that direction. Makes sure that they are nice and tight. Now I'm going back this way. And I'm gonna go back out the middle hole. This is where you all go, but hang on, how, how are you gonna tie this? So something I learned from Sea Lemon, and I haven't given myself enough. Right, you go back through and then through that loop. I don't think I'm going to have enough. This is where it gets a bit tricky. Oh, just enough, right? And then pull the knot downwards. Okay, so you can barely see that knot now. That's what I learned from Sea Lemon. And then I just pull it back through there, put it so that the knot is on the inside, and then you can just knot these two um, pieces together. Okay, and because that one's not actually been knotted, you can get hold of it and pull it tighter. That's the one thing I do that she did differently. She knots this before she goes, and then I found it was making my other threads loose. So I don't do it that way. I usually don't cut the thread yet, but I haven't got nothing to move her. And then all you do is you knot your tops, your starter and your ends together. I'm sorry, I know my nails are probably obscuring everything. Like so. And then you can just trim these up. I like to knot them again just to make absolutely certain that it is not going to come undone. So yeah, I do it with a double knot or a box knot, I think it's called. And then just trim those bits off, like so. So there we go. Jeez, how, you know, I'm quite impressed with how well that's gone into a notebook. 
I'm going to have a go at something else as well because I did this with a little notebook earlier. Some people don't like the sticky out pages. Okay, so I'm going to line up my ruler with the cardboard, the cardstock edge of the book. And you press on the ruler, but you don't press with your knife. Okay, you trust in the sharpness of your knife to do the job. That was the first mistake I ever learned while doing these. The trouble is, once you've started as well, it's not a job you can bloody stop, because you'll never get that ruler back in the same place. This is something that takes patience. You cannot rush this. It's a little bit messy. I think I caught the bottom. That's just where I've obviously not folded that very straight. But, you know, I don't mind. I would be more inclined, I think, to snip that than anything. Yeah. Apparently we're playing Simon Says. <laughs> um, yeah, I would maybe just give that a little trim. That'll do. Right. I've got a corner rounder. So it all seems quite nice and tight. I'm doing everything that I would do on, or that I have done on previous notebooks. I don't think I've round, oh yeah, I have rounded the corners. I did that the other night. I'm going to do it in batches of five. Clearly, I need to um, eat before I film videos. I've got the shakes. in a 10 mil corner mainly because I like the wideness of a 10 mil corner well there you go that is the Tom away that is for 60 pages this is 80 GSM this also has 60 pages look at the difference And now I'm showing you where the difference is. That's quite a difference, you know. Yeah, quite a difference. Yeah, my, my only major bugbear was, and I didn't even notice this, is that the paper is ivory. But, well, that's just one of the things that I will have to maybe get used to if I decide to stick with Tom away. I will have to review it again at the end of the month that I use it um, that is going to be June so I will do a June flip through and show you <coughs> um, how well I got on so check back then I hope you found this useful this is an honest review okay um, I'm not paid for this nobody's sent me this I'm buy these products myself and um, I pay for them out of my own pocket um, I hope you found it interesting I hope it's been helpful is there anything I missed out is there anything you want to know um, I'd be with mommy yeah Daryl's with mommy um, thank you is there anything else you wish me to test on that first piece that Tom away of that Tom away paper that's all the things I tested I tested a couple of different fountain pens with a couple of different types of ink um, my paper may ink dry gel pens in 0.5 and 0.7 which has now dried really really nicely actually 
Um, I started with dual tips, Crayola, Kelly Creates, Tombows, Pit Arts pens. I coloured in with a brush pen. Um, some other ink draw pens that I've had for ages, which are 1.0s, I believe. There's a Bic 4 colour, a Pilot, gel pen in gold, some watercolour, some stamping ink, a gelato. I uh, can't remember what that was. Oh, that was a highlighter and a Sharpie. And the only thing that really, really bled through was the Sharpie so yeah there you go um i hope you found that helpful in some way shape or form but yeah any questions leave them down below yeah i, I love a bit of communication anything i can help you with anything you want to know and click the bell click the bell that's right if you click the book you'll be subscribed and if you click the bell you'll be up notified when i upload new content yeah you put your thumbs up as well put your thumbs up then underneath please feel free to give this video a thumbs up hey if you want to give it a thumbs down please do but yeah let me know why why are you giving it a thumbs down let me know why you're giving it a thumbs up it's a comment i love it all and um take I it easy and say so, right say so, see you later then bye, bye.